everyone to come back for a very last session of this two-day symposium. So the last session is um, titled Curatorial Ecologies, and I'm uh, very grateful for you three, Tanguy Akar, Janet Wang, Rachid Ramdan, and Angela Mattox, who will facilitate the, the panel to um, join us. I just want to say also that Philip Beither, um, who uh, was supposed to be with us today, also had to cancel. So um, today was a yes, an event um, marked by um, yes, many um, um, yes. Uh, we were talking about death earlier, so um, it is part of the room in many ways. Philip is okay, but um, yes, had to um, stay in um, Minneapolis and, and Chicago. So he's sending his uh, warmest thoughts. Is with us and. Um, in spirit, and um, yes, so I'll just pass it on to Angela. Thank you. Thank you, Noemi. Um, and thank you, Ville Albertine, for hosting this. We're at our final conversation. Um, I, I'm, I, I don't know how you are feeling. Um, it's been incredibly rich and complex, um, and I'm just trying to take it all in and absorb, and I think uh, I really wanna acknowledge the prompt by Noemi and Bill Arbutin also to be in the moment, you know? So we've all taken a lot of notes. We think deeply about this work. We are embedded in these practices, but I'm, you know, I'm processing in this moment too of everything that was shared. And I really wanna um, thank everyone's candor and um, for this final panel, bringing in that level of urgency that I think that has been a thread throughout the last two days and maybe continue on with themes of hope and theme, themes of aspiration and themes of um, the future. So again, we're at uh, curato curatorial ecologies. Some of the questions that were posed initially were, you know, what is the role of the dance curator in this cultural moment? What are the urgencies that guide the work and take into, into account the stark social inequalities in these political and economic times? We were asked to think about our accountability to artists our accountability to audiences locally and globally. We're thinking about the responsibility of the presenting field, considering these ecological challenges we face while we can continue to nurture exchanges locally and globally. Those were the initial prompts, and there's so many more prompts that have arisen in the last couple of hours, like where do we go panel? You know, we were just sitting here talking like, okay, we could, we could take this a lot of directions. So I ask all of you in the room as well, this is our final chance to chat. So, you know, we'll, we've, these wonderful panelists have been asked to prepare a few moments of insights and introductions. We'll have a bit of a chat, and then I think we might open it up a little bit earlier, you know, also with our respondent, Ali Rosa Salas, as well. Um, start thinking about your questions, because I think, again, we, we wanna maybe have this final panel maybe link to future conversations where we can find each other and continue on. The additional questions I posed to these wonderful colleagues also were, why do we do this work? <laughs> and I mean it really like, yeah, like with humor, but also earlier today, we, you know, our humanity was really called to the room, you know, themes of life and loss. And I add to that love, love life and loss. Why do we do the work? I do it because I love it. <laughs> and the care around it, and the relational aspect, the relationships, the people. What is the imperative? What's at stake if we don't continue on? We're talking about global exchange. What's at stake if it goes away? What's at stake for us? We all might view that differently. And again, going back to the aspirations, where can we go? What are the aspirations around the work? Dorote mentioned earlier, how do we reduce the distance between us? That stuck with me. Just now, the panel was, how do we face these complexities? How do we adapt the models? I wanna turn it over to our panelists um, and also just respect that in the last panel, we started to talk about, again, infrastructure and institutions. We're gonna talk about institutions. This is maybe the dialogue to talk about what we're doing within the institutions. And I just wanna really honor and thank these three amazing individuals that I'm sitting with, I've known for some time. And to say we are all three-dimensional, that came up earlier today, we are three-dimensional human beings doing the work within a particular context. Where are you at 
give us some insights about what you're doing and where we can go. So to start us off, um, Janet Wong, thank you so much for kicking the dialogue off today. You are Associate Artistic Director at New York Live Arts and Bilty Jones Arnie Zane Dance Company. Can you just share a bit more about your perspective and background and of the various prompts that I gave and have come up the last couple of days, what's on your mind? Well, I'm a little bit nervous now. <laughs> um, you know, so, so many thoughts in my mind, um, but um, I'm supposed to talk about myself first and how I came to sit in this position of privilege in an organization, the tiny little organization, but with a big, you know, uh, heart. <laughs> I want to say big dick, but big heart. Um, but there's David Thompson. Okay, so I was a dancer. I was a ballet dancer, you know, and um, I uh, I've been working with the Bill T. Jones Honey Singh Company since 1996. So I'm quite old. Um, and I, you know, just thinking about this morning archives, I feel like I'm a walking archive of everything and it's constantly evolving, constantly evolving. And I, and I lean on that, that we are constantly evolving. Even the organization, can an organization be in perpetual uh, evolution? Um, so I um, became the rehearsal director of Bill T. Jones Honey Zane Company. We took the word dance out of the company just to say, we can do anything inside of a performance space, sorry. Um, and, and then I became the, uh, the associate artistic director in 2006. And then in 2011-12 season, um, New York Live Arts was born out of the merger between the Bill T. Jones Ani Zane Company and this historical, very important organization called Dance Theatre Workshop, which was formed in 1965, which I'm sure most of you know of. Um, and at that time, we were quite separate, the company and um, New York Live Arts. Uh, and then in 2016-17 season, I became also the Associate Artistic Director of New York Live Arts, and I uh, co-curate uh, the programming at New York Live Arts with Bill T. Jones, um, with literally no experience. So if, if I had applied for the job, I would not have gotten it, for sure. <laughs> So I'm still learning. <laughs> um, Judy remembers when I called her, please, can I have some information? Uh, my study, my, my learning still continues, right? It's ongoing, ongoing. Um, that's Confucius said something like that to you. Always learning, always learning. Um, and so we are a very small organization, uh, like I said, with a big whatever. And um, we present, um, movement-based, body-based performance work, um, present uh, presentations are usually through partnerships. And we also do, most of the work that we, we present is actually through our residency commissioning programs. And uh, we work with artists, national United States artists, and also some uh, international artists. And we're hoping to do more of that. And of course, oftentimes it's with the help of Villa Bertin and uh, partnerships with other organizations that we can do that. Um, so, um, and so today, I, I, what can I talk about? There's so many prompts, and I thought maybe I can bring it back to the idea of international exchange and uh, the fact that I'm sitting here in this room, French Villa Abetine, and that is part of the dance season, a year-long dance season, and concurrently there is the Dance Reflections Van Cleef and Appel's festival that's citywide running from, they started last week and it's going to go through December. The bulk of it is these two weeks. And I'm thinking, where are the Americans? Where is the American equivalent to this? Why are we not putting out? Where, I mean, Van Cleef and Appels, where's Tiffany's, I've been saying. <laughs> right? <laughs> and so, I've been, so, so I'm going to talk about a few of my obsessions. One of that is, one of them is this, is there is a lack of visibility. I'm not even gonna talk about the, the local problems. I'm just gonna talk about the lack of visibility and opportunities for American artists at this moment. And this is totally not academic research. So um, I, I mean, just scouring the recent festivals uh, in the summer, like Montpellier, Avignon, uh, Lyon, uh, that's not in the summer, um, Festival de Marseille, like, um, 
almost zero Americans, right? Um, and <laughs> when you look at uh, if they're not living in, in, in Europe in particular, like Festival d'Auton right now, there is, of course, Trajal Harel, who's the portrait, spans the whole fall. And then there is Trisha Brown Company. Um, I think uh, because of her roots, her, the company's roots in France, but also Noé Sulia making a work for the company. And then there's Faye Driscoll. And all of you in Paris, please go and see that work. It's, a part, it's the third part of her trilogy. Thank you for coming, Space, and it's in end of November, I think. Um, so I'm thinking, what is this lack? Where are the Americans? And in my capacity at New York Live Arts, we try to create a platform for the artists to share their work, especially during the January conferences, APAP, um, and um, what's the other one, ISPA, the international version of it. So we do this thing called Live Artery, where, where the whole building's taken over. We have studio showings, we do uh, fully produced performances in uh, the theater, and uh, we even started a salon in the lobby. So the whole space is uh, taken over. And so please come back in January. That's the chance where you can uh, to see American artists and also international artists. Uh, and we are limited by, you know, physical space. We have a very small space and also time uh, because it's limited and also funding. And um, but this year we are this next one, we're going to expand outside of a wall and, you know, partner with organizations to create more opportunities. And, you know, the way that other countries support their cultural export. I can only be so jealous. Like, for example, the French, of course, and also ca Canadians, the Germans, the Koreans, the Taiwanese, the Finnish, the, oh my God. If you've been to Sinars, I, I was invited for the first time to Sinars uh, this past, last year, last year, and uh, which is a Canadian APAP. And um, there were almost no American artists present because you need a subsidy from, this, from your country to be there. There were maybe two or three booths from Americans. There's a whole exhibition hall there. But then there is the Scandinavians, the whole, that whole region. You know what I'm saying? They came together and they supported the artists. There was a German showcase. That was like, damn, right? And people were asking me, people who run big festivals, dance festivals, they said, what is happening in the United States? So I tried to invite the chairman of the NEA, <laughs> the National Endowment for the Arts. I just cold emailed her, uh, Dr. Maria Rosario Jackson, and Michael Orloff, who's in charge of uh, international partnerships. They come to the symposium, see what's happening, see, you know, see what is not happening. And they have their annual arts council, right? Uh, today, actually, so they cannot be here, but we're gonna report, send them a report. I also invited uh, people from the Mellon Foundation. And of course, Emil is part of that Arts Council, so we're also gonna report to them. Um, I like to cold email people. <laughs> and, you, and sometimes you get a response, right? Um, so <laughs> sometimes you get a response. So, you know, I think the Americans should really step up. Yes, because cultural exchange is more important than ever. Look at this moment of the lack of diplomacy. Look at this moment of the lack of exchange. We are sitting here watching this thing unfold in Gaza. Anyway, so, okay, I've probably used up all my time, but can I just jump in? Uh, I'll use some of Philip's time. Um, <laughs> hey, I'll just... So the, um, my second obsession is about the environment. Talking about exchange, right? And I mean, do we stop this international exchange? I don't think that's the way to go. I know there are artists that say, okay, I'm gonna stop making work that I make. I'm gonna find another way. I'm gonna just send concepts across the pond and then they can make it up. That's great, that's another way, but not everyone can do it. There's something about face to face. Look at all of us here t today. Look at what, what, what we talk about during lunch. So, that's important. So that's my obsession. I think the United States, again, sorry, I'm gonna be kicked out of this country, I'm an immigrant. Um, the United States is lacking, lagging behind Europe. I, you know, I started 
with my colleagues, a few of my colleagues at New York Live Arts, a green initiative, and we're like doing a little things here and there, and you know, changing all of our uh, the, the the things we use cups. I personally take those things to the composting, and then I dump them into the bin myself, <laughs> um, and and um, oh. Giselle Vienne's set. If you've seen Giselle Vienne's piece, the walls that were built at FTA in Montreal, um, and then they were shipped to uh, Chatham, and then they were cut down in size a little bit more for New York Live Arts. So they were going to go into the trash, it's the wall, wraparound walls and white carpeting. So I said, no way, I'm the head of the Green Initiative. So I just cold email a bunch of theaters in New York, and, and guess what? The next day, NYU Theater Department said, we'll take it all. So yes, right? So little things. What do you say just now? Uh, uh, you don't, if you don't know that it's impossible, <laughs> you just go ahead and do it. Yeah. So we all have to do our, our thing. I know we live in a place where we can turn on the air conditioner, but somebody else is dying in the global south. Not even the global south, here, right? Look at all the fires and the floods that have been happening. And then my, my final last obsession, I have a lot of obsessions, but my final obsession is is not even aspirational. I don't know where to go with that. I'm, Laura, Lauren said it so well. I just want to say it because I have a mic right now that I oscillate between forgetting about what's going on in Gaza and suddenly remembering it, and my body goes into this traumatic, I don't know what. And, you know, I wrote to the White House <laughs> four times, and the last one was all caps. Ceasefire, ceasefire, ceasefire is going to the trash. It's probably just for my own sanity that I'm writing that. But uh, I'm just uh, mis misquoting Judith Butler saying <sighs> something about precarity, the lives of precarity, you know, what lives are worth saving and whose death is wor are worth mourning. So, okay, I'm done. <laughs> Thank you, Janet. Thank you, Janet, so much. Um, I hear you on all of those and the, uh, the same, being in the, dealing with issues and ideas in real time in multiple places. And it goes back to what we're talking about today around what's happening here, what's happening afar, and what's in the body around it. Thank you for sharing that. Tangi Akar, I'm gonna turn things over to you. Is your mic working? No, maybe, um, sweet, thank you. Uh, hello, yes. Hello. Sanghi, welcome. It's great to have you. Thank you. Uh, thank you for your uh, word and uh, it's very inspiring and this energy you have to put in. Um, I am Tongi Akar and I'm uh, the, the deputy director of La Maison de la Danse and director of development of La Biennale de la Danse. It's my first trip overseas since 17, when I, uh, 21, for, yeah, 21. It was, uh, I spent four years in Chicago. I had the pleasure to live in that uh, extraordinary city. I felt in love with the city and I had the position of cultural attaché. So I know a bit about uh, the United States, especially the Midwest, that no one from France knows. So that was an exciting experience for me to make this extraordinary territory. And it, I think it's interesting because it gives you a another story of the United States also. Uh, so maybe I have later some time to tell about some experience and thought through my uh, work in Chicago, but for now I will be more uh, serious and I took some notes that I wrote uh, to this night, during the night, I would say. So, um, so I've been working in uh, La Maison de la Danse and La Biennale de la Danse uh, since 21, so it's recent. And I arrived with uh, Thiago Guedes, the new director of both institutions. Uh, Maison de la Danse and Biennale de la Danse are two very distinct cultural organizations, but they have that specificity uh, to have a, a common direction. Uh, and when Tiago uh, applied, uh, we had to present a project for the two organizations, thinking the complementarity, uh, the common spaces between them, uh, in order to highlight a kind of unique model uh, for dance, for creation, for artists, and for the audience in Lyon and abroad. 
the principal missions of both institutions to, to be fast is to uh, promote access for all to culture and especially dance and to support and make visible the work of artists. More specifically, Maison de la Danse programs a large diversity of dances and aesthetics from local to international. We do ballet, neoclassic, contemporary, uh, very established or emerging artists, uh, traditional of urban dance, uh, but also cabaret or circus. Uh, we have a theater with 1,100 uh, seats and one studio of 100 seats. And Biennale de la Danse, uh, whose last edition uh, just took place uh, last September, is more about inviting local audience, but also professional, because it's also a professional platform, uh, to explore the actuality of dance at the international level. Uh, there was about uh, 15 countries represented through the, the, the performances that we did invited the last edition, and is much more involved uh, in the new forms of creation, uh, saying that about 40% of our uh, program uh, where creation and French premiere this to, to this uh, this year at la maison de la danse we program about 50 shows during a season for about 140 uh, representation which make about uh, more than 100,000 tickets and spectators at la biennale we presented last September 48 shows in Lyon uh, the Lyon metropole but also in the region uh, in 50 different venues, and we have a total about uh, 50,000 tickets. I mention all that because I think it's important also to, to know about practical question. And I wanted to mention the number of tickets because uh, contrary to received ID and uh, assumption that I've heard sometime from the US side, uh, box office is a very important and crucial thing in France too. Uh, and it's a lot of uh, work and communication and and work of outreach to get people and potential uh, audience into, into our theater. So as an example, the financial equilibrium at La Maison de la Danse uh, uh, is based on 60% of own resources and 50% from box office. Uh, and uh, we need also to raise money. And in terms of fundraising, I would say that uh, if I, uh, Maison de la Danse plus Biennale, we have to raise about 1.5 million euro uh, of a private fund to uh, implement the project that we want to, to develop. Uh, saying that, we receive, of course, a lot of support from our uh, public partners, uh, national, local, not only financial, but uh, I, I can say that we have with most of them uh, a pretty constant and constructive dialogue. Um, Maison and Vienna, they have uh, nine associated artists, three local, three national and three international. Um, we have the mission to support the development of artists and creation through co-production, different kind of uh, mentoring, especially for the local artists and a residency program. We're talking yesterday about residencies and I think that we will increase the number of uh, uh, places for residency in France because in three years we'll have a new space very next to La Maison de la Danse, named Les Ateliers de la Danse, uh, with a big creation theater of uh, 400 seats, a studio with uh, 120 seats, uh, both totally equipped uh, to finalize and create work, uh, a big studio for research and workshop, and an open air space on the rooftop to work on form of public space. So it will transform totally our mission and especially uh, how we can have the artist all the time with us and to, to create, to 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 uh, dialogue with the, the community, the people, the artists, et cetera, et cetera. And we want, of course, to uh, design that space for local, national, but also international artists. Um, we develop also a lot of outreach in the community program. Yesterday, Elsa, when we were talking about the residency, it was difficult to find the exact word when we talk about uh, media, mediation, action culturelle, education artistic and cultural. I think I, I talked with uh, Will yesterday and he said, yeah, it's with a outreach program and community engagement program. So, and we do, we do it a lot and it's really, really part of our mission like uh, she is doing at Chaillou and his team and many, many other theater. Um, I would say that in this global environment, we, we, we work in constant dialogue between local and international, from local to international, from international to local. And in the same way, um, the different missions and activities that we are doing are 
very, very connected to different layers of collaboration. I would even say, I would even say that our practices are immersed in collaboration. First, at the local level, uh, the question of collaborating with other uh, theater, with artists, with agencies, with uh, cultural, different cultural organizations is not, uh, um, yeah, I think it's not a possibility, it's a necessity, even an injunction from uh, our public partners, founders, uh, each at its own level of responsibility, of competence, uh, which responds to questions and issues that uh, we all need to resolve if we want to work better and have a, um, a better future for art and, uh, and, and culture in France, in ecological, economic, and also social uh, level. So we've been uh, asked to work, of course, on ecological issues, and it's more and more important, like to calculate our on footprint, looking, for instance, uh, at issues of mobility, mobility of artists, uh, mainly mobility of the audience, how do they come to our theater, uh, of professionals. Uh, we organize a lot, we, we are part of a lot of uh, working group to think together how to decarbonize culture uh, in France, uh, at the level of the city, of the metropole. Um, we work a lot to organize what we call green tours, which is means organized rational tour of performance in order to raise you the travel. Uh, we will today never invite international project without having at least three, maybe four partners in France. Uh, we work a lot with uh, Chaillot, uh, discussing uh, constantly about our interest in order to agree on the. Uh, the, the companies and the work that we'd like to to uh, to invite. Um, for the performing art sector, I think it's interesting also to, to say a few words about the Ministry of Culture. Uh, they put recently a, a kind of a priority in their agenda uh, that they call mieux produire, mieux diffuser, uh, producing better and uh, touring or disseminating better. Uh, you must hear limiting other production and uh, encouraging touring uh, to extend the life of performances uh, and creation. Uh, again, Will yesterday uh, was pointing that uh, he had to wait until 25, I think, to find the fifth venue uh, of uh, his last creation. I don't know if you were here, Will. Maybe you left. Yes. It's what you say, right? So, uh, something like that. What? You have to wait for two years to have a chance to do so. Okay. So we have the, yeah, it's about the same, <laughs> the same question. And, uh, and uh, if we take a look on the, on, the, on the numbers in France, I think it's uh, also a very bad situation. There is a, a lot of uh, uh, companies, much more than here. But uh, we really have the problem of the number of, uh, the average of number of representation per work. It's, I don't remember, but it's very, uh, very bad, two maybe or three, something like that. So the, the Ministry of Culture really asked us to, to work more actively, much more actively on that uh, crucial question. It's really about the future of dance and uh, how we can preserve. It's also about ecological practice. I mean, to, to, to produce a piece, to have just three representation, it's totally a problem today. Um, um, so, and of course, that means we are constantly working and calling and discussing with colleagues from France, from the region, from the city, uh, to, to get more chance to, for the artists to tour as much as they can. It works pretty well. We, we have the chance to, to have, of course, as some of you know, a, a very uh, structured and strong ecosystem, but it needs a lot of work because we are very, um, vastly focused on our own uh, structures, organization, uh, work. And, uh, and so I think we need to stay alive to, uh, to uh, oblige ourselves to always be in connection and in relation with other colleagues. We are also working in terms of uh, fostering exchange, um, increase uh, the visibility of artworks uh, to the professional sectors and uh, facilitate the dialogue between artists and presenters. This is why we do 
organized during the Biennale the Focus Dance. Some of you were there this year, a dance platform that we organize in partnership still about partnership and collaboration with ONDA, the Institut Francais, and also in close uh, relation with the different cultural services of the French Embassy in the world. And uh, we had this year 300 uh, presenters from many countries, I don't remember. But uh, it's just to say the importance uh, of this moment also to engage collaboration. Uh, in New York City, we, how many projects uh, were burned from in, during, in January in HAPAP? international collaboration. I'm sure there were a lot. And I was happy to to read that the, the rebirth about the Under the Radar, not only for Under the Radar, but I know that that kind of festival can uh, give an impulse to bring people from abroad and uh, engage dialogue. And uh, I'm not sure, I don't know, it was from since the, the end of COVID to now, but I'm, I know it was pretty bad in New York, so I really hope that that kind of uh, encounter will, will be very positive for all of you and all of us, actually. Um, collaboration is pretty strong also at the European level, and um, we have also the chance to develop a cooperation project thanks to the European Union and the, through the Creative Europe program uh, to encourage cooperation uh, with the central questions of uh, innovation, solidarity, equity. Uh, we are part of a few uh, program, uh, European program, and uh, I have to say that it's, uh, it's uh, an extraordinary way to, uh, to think together and to have a moment and time to reflect about our practices from Serbia to France, from uh, Norway to uh, Portugal. Um, thinking now about extra uh, European exchanges, uh, the question asked uh, in this panel uh, resonates a lot with another meeting that we organized during the Biennale, uh, which title was uh, Building Together What Form of Cultural Cooperation to Cope with Social Change. So we do a lot of meetings like that, and I think it's uh, important, but it's not the only one. And this title has been transformed by the the sentence, a very beautiful sentence from a, a, a group of uh, artists and cultural workers uh, that I read in the book named Reshape, uh, name of a European project that aimed to imagine new ways of translational exchange. Um, and the name of this was Building a Dream of the Generosity Solidarity Shelter, Rethinking Transnational Collaboration in a Changing World. Um, so this meeting was led by uh, my dear friend Melissa Illich. She's uh, an expert uh, on international uh, cultural cooperation. And this meeting started with this observation. Um, I think it's good to recycle also <laughs> meetings in order to have a... I mean, it was very interesting. And uh, um, so the, 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 she, she started by uh, an, uh, observing a, a contradiction which is in one end uh, that the practices in the art world are immersed in a collaboration, defined by collaboration. Um, international exchange are pretty much a very uh, deeply present in, in our sector, sector, sorry, but in the other end, collaborations are deeply influenced by neoliberal market logic and the majority of the models of exchange in art is still fostering overproduction, extraction, power relation, highlighting also that the question of visibility, access to mobility, uh, to resources, is dependent also on where the artists uh, are based. So the main question where um, we discuss a lot about how to uh, collaborate about um, uh, across different contexts, uh, considering the difference and how the context, the history, uh, culture, social realities uh, can define our practice as an impact is our, in our practice and also to highlight the specificity, also the inequality in working conditions. So from, from this, we, I, but some, uh, there was a lot of keywords that appeared to engage international exchange, and the three most important words was care, solidarity, and context. And I will add that uh, this question of context is uh, very important if you want to work on collaboration and artistic exchange. As a creator uh, and 
future workers, I think this is our responsibility to understand and dig into the context in which artists are working to, um, to, to de and, and develop their practice, especially if we want reciprocities. Um, when we wrote the, the project uh, for La Biennale de la Danse, uh, we discussed a lot about how to engage ourselves in a, at the global and extra-European level, considering that the Biennale is an international uh, event. And as a response, we created a project named Forum, the Forum, a space for gathering uh, at international level and, level and focusing on the practice and not necessarily the, the product. Uh, it was also the idea to engage a relation of trust with uh, curators from different parts of the world with whom we share the same values uh, and on ecological aspects to know about the state of world's creation without having necessarily uh, to travel constantly. So this program is co-constructed with five non-European curators from five different regions of the world, the United States, and we are very honored and happy and proud to have as the first curator, Angela Matux, here present. So we, we had a lot of uh, exchange, Zoom exchange this last month. So there is United States, Taiwan, uh, a curator from Australia, from Brazil, and from Mozambique. And each curator, uh, we asked to each curator to initiate uh, and accompany a, a local artistic project and gathering with five artists uh, from their respective uh, geography. So we are not at the point we selected the artist and it's still very in process. Um, and the following regular online and face-to-face uh, -face meeting in the five continents and also a work of documentation, the results and the artistic project resulting from this forum will be uh, presented during the Biennale 25. So it's a long-term uh, process. Um, uh, and... Um, I wanted to highlight this example uh, because I think it's important for organizations that are deeply rooted in, interna in international uh, exchange to experiment new way of uh, cooperation and uh, maybe to ask this question of how we want to be engaged in the global society, especially from our very privileged position. Um, to conclude for now uh, about the question of responsibility of creator, I, I take also some small time of uh, Philip. Uh, our main responsibility, I think, is really to create an uh, environment, positive environment, to, to uh, engage a dialogue between artists, between artists and professional, between artists and the audience, between artists themselves. And I think this question of creating a positive environment, it's the main, um, I mean, the main question and the main most important thing to me. Uh, and I finished with this quote of Kudu Sonikeku. He was invited during this uh, meeting that I mentioned in Lyon. Um, and uh, he said something I, I think is very relevant and, uh, and important uh, about international exchange and reciprocities. He said about inviting project, projects and artists from abroad that it's not about giving opportunity, but creating a space where opportunities can happen. And uh, I really like this distinction uh, um, about not to extract the project, to give the opportunity to that project to be presented abroad uh, in another context, like a gift that you would give to an artist, but create a context uh, where just things can happen. And I think it's beautiful. That was beautiful. Thank you, Tangi. Where you, where you, Sorry. where you ended on that reminded me of you know yesterday we we're talking about it, it came up in the room artists in partnership with institutions. I think it was in the pedagogical um, conversation, but I think that is very much as part of this panel too. Artists in partnership. How are we meeting the artists? One thing, Tangi, really before I turn things over to Rashid, you mentioned the key words that were coming up in your work. Was it care? context and, and solidarity of and course. solidarity perhaps we can expand upon that once we open it all the way um to the to the full discussion um rashid oramdan we're going to continue i think with you with um you are starting to already foreground i think so many really poignant approaches with your uh new role at chayo i wonder if you can continue to dive into those um the ways that you're you, you talked about play, you talked about um, 
being in service too, and you started to talk about hospitality. I know you prepared um, some notes, but I'm looking forward to hearing a continuation of some of those thematics. So Rashid, the floor is yours. Thank you. Um, I suppose I have no Philippe time left. Um, <laughs> <laughs> and I, I even, yeah, I even wondering if I still have uh, a sheet time. No, Ali. Um, no, uh, yeah, of course, I've said things before. Uh, I might repeat myself a little bit, but I, I will try to, to get some issue that start to rise up. But uh, yeah, just a little bit to go back to Shayo, um, a bit of uh, history, and, and maybe to understand what I said before and what I why this position of this theater that when you come to show you, you, you don't come with your project or you don't come as a person. You are facing, um, you are facing 100, 100 years of democratization of art and culture. Uh, this institution had been built for a world fair for a moment where people believed that um, scientific knowledge and artistic knowledge could be the base for a common culture. That from the beginning, the, the, the purpose of that structure was to gather the city, was to gather different fields of knowledge, different uh, uh, actions. Then, and, and after very important figures like Jean Villard, Firmin Gémier, Seattle director, really made revolution. Uh, uh, you know, Jean Villard created what we call in French uh, the, uh, Théâtre National Populaire, National Popular Theatre. And, uh, and after he created the Avignon Festival and this heritage of, uh, uh, at that time popular, I think the word today would be inclusion, to, to, to democratize. Uh, because what we, uh, the, the popular uh, practices in the 20s are different from the 60s, uh, from the 80s, because since then we, we, we receive all those uh, multicultural knowledge um, we, uh, we, we are dealing with gender this issue, we have integrated the revolution of digital world, then what makes popular and what federate uh, is totally different today than before. But just to, to, to say that, because leading Shayo means to, to try to federate all those fields and to bring culture where culture is not. The idea is not to make people to culture. It's to bring culture where there is no culture. Oh, sorry, there is always culture everywhere. Where there is no art, certain art practices, or where art practices and culture are damaged. And I want to take a precaution because often that could give the, a kind of vertical vision of culture, uh, which was, and I totally agree with you, uh, Tanguy, when you say uh, many theater are doing, uh, what is the English word, uh, education, uh, Outreach, etc. But, but I think that what is important, again, referring to what I said before, it's to not be vertical, to, 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 to make emerge everything which had been invisibilized and to not have a messianic approach of cultural life. I bring you the light. Um, and um, then that's it. I, I just wanted to precise that because, yeah, uh, when you think, a programmation in Shayo that's through this uh, through this filter, and um, well, I said things already, an artwork on the scale of the city, etc. But uh, that's really, uh, that's uh, this heritage I was mentioning before. Uh, Ali, to go straight to um, uh, international collaboration um, uh, beyond the regular what I call the the regular programmation, which is to invite project international project, how you say it, now with this uh, duty we have to make it in collaboration, to not make fly people from all over the world alone. No, we have to optimize economically and ecologically, and to optimize economically, it is an ecological act, then voila, we, we walked uh, 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 through networks. But uh, uh, then there is this regular activities, but uh, what we, uh, what I also, uh, try to, to, to share and maybe to refer a bit what you said about giving a space at the end uh, of your presentation, Tanguy. Uh, every month there is um, an invitation to a territory um, and we call that Shayo Experience. We, we invite projects, uh, choreography or the 
or the kind of project. But during those Shayo experience, which is a kind of mini festival, mini focus, we try to share the scene, the, uh, an, an ecosystem, a total environment. Then uh, the next one will be about Algeria. Then we are, we are going to have Algerian choreographers, but also uh, press, press drawers, uh, concert, uh, 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 debate, uh, programmation of films, documentary, uh, sharing practices, um, uh, immaterial, uh, uh, immaterial uh, patri uh, UNESCO, uh, pardon, patrimoine immaterial de l'humanité, uh, au patrimoine. Uh, patrimonial, uh, immaterial patrimonial uh, from the humanity project uh, with uh, uh, kind of uh, music practices. Then uh, what we try to, uh, and, and a lot of workshop, uh, a lot of initiative from associ association from Algeria or from the um, uh, immigration of uh, 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 Algerian immigration. And we try to have those moments of popular sharing practices and because I think it's really important to not only show an art piece, but to try to bring a fragment of this ecosystem, the fragment, a fragment of the environment where all those pieces are, are, are done. Then we are going to have one uh, 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 this season about Rwanda. Um, the, I was doing that. She's gone. Dorothy, <laughs> uh, she's a, as an associated artist, will be co-curating the thing. But, uh, but that's it. We work with... Um, uh, uh, a local artist from Rwanda, but also uh, all the collaboration that exists already between the country. And that's a way to, um, to still maintain uh, an international connection. And every time when we are doing that, the partners are different. Because sometimes you have some countries who have a cultural um, uh, institute who, who could be partner, uh, or, or where there is a culture of fundraising, sometimes no. Then we always, every time we have to invent a new uh, economical model uh, to, to make that possible. But by the fact, how I said before, you, you work with different partners, you, can, you, you find different partners from different sectors in the countries. And uh, then you have uh, Algeria, we are going to, oh, sorry, we are going to have one about the transatlantic relation with Villa Bertin in December. Uh, but, uh, but yeah, that's an approach, and which I think it's, uh, voila, uh, Many of you are professional traveling. You know how it looks like countries when we don't have those international cooperations, I suppose. I mean, I worked in Vietnam, I, I worked in Russia. I mean, you know the, the, uh, how sometimes things could be much more tense uh, w when there is this absence of intercultural practices. And, um, and that's why we all have we all have to, to think uh, how to reduce our carbon footprint, etc. Well, there is many diverse approaches. But I think that we should never consider the cultural object as a, manuf as a manufacturer object. The, the value of a cultural object, traveling, is not the new Nike shoes. Like, uh, it, there is, and it's not a way to say, oh, we are artists, we, don't we, we should not consider all those uh, ecological issues. We are considering it in a transition project, but we should assume that maybe we still have to, to, to make travel a cultural object because they create a certain tolerance all over the world, a certain knowledge all over the world, and that's it, just to refer to the carbon print the same way we make travel cars, etc., is sorry, it's naive. Uh, it's to 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 have an economical approach and not a political approach, and that's maybe where we, we will end up. I will I will go to that um, because United States have a lot of money. It's probably one of the country. The uh, the economy of the United States is uh, is one of the stronger one, and often we hear that there is a problem in the country to support art, comparing countries who have not a so strong economical economy. But I will go that to the end. Um, uh, and then, uh, that's it. And also, what we try to do, uh, 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 again, just to give an example of uh, uh, how to say nourishing, uh, nourished um, uh, cooperation, we developed this program of um, 
uh, holiday camp, artistic holiday camp, because we have to focus on supporting the artists. But I think that if we don't create citizens who have a, a taste for art or taste for cultural practices, then uh, it's a kind of uh, van uh, empty basket every time, like, because we, we have to federate the, the strengths for creation, but to, to, to also construct the people that will appreciate and enjoy uh, the, the, the creation. Then we have different programs, like those holiday camp, inspired by what uh, Alvin Ale Foundation have done during many years. Then during two weeks, the kids, especially vulnerable kids that we are working with, uh, uh, have uh, dance uh, movement practices. Uh, uh, we try to also mix sports and uh, dance practices because we know the potential that sports uh, uh, the, the potential that sports have to federate um, uh, uh, the, uh, the the youthness and they just realize that through sport they can start to reach other uh, uh, yeah they can approach uh, uh, arts uh, dance is everywhere dance is in fashion dance is in sport dance is in cinema dance is on the social network dance is on the uh, the the, the uh, um, uh, pardon, I need my list in English. Well-being, cinema, research the, in the music industry, and all those domains are doors to reach dance, but not only in a mainstream culture. And that's after the the work we have to do. But uh, I would I would totally assume to use sometimes those uh, those very popular key to introduce dance we are doing i have a very uh, i have an associate artist he's a rap singer you can see his movie in netflix he's a really nice and interesting person really well known kerry james in france and uh, the way he has to federate people when he's doing something he opened the door to audience that you never see in our institutions because often we, uh, i'm going in theater and say yeah See, we did a show and we met come like 20 people from the neighborhood uh, and they are yeah but it's uh, like if it's complex and if it's we always have to be in a very small scale it is a way it is important but i also do believe that uh, we have to uh, always try to use the tool that allow us to act in a very wide scale often no i yeah i like because sometimes uh, people from different uh, uh, queer community, not a, it's not. But um, I like to remember that when David Bowie did Ziggy Stardust, that was a world phenomenon. It was not only something for uh, that people reduced to uh, 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 my uh, my uh, uh, community minoritaire. Then, then that's it. I think it's uh, it's always interesting to try to to think in terms of scale and which domain can open the door to a wide art uh, practice. Um, neighborhood, yeah. The, Ali, um, to um, Ali, a bit provocative. I think that we are facing the market world. Uh, the market world, how it works so far. I really think that we are facing a wall, co-producing and uh, just. Uh, 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 presenting the show, I think that the end of this model. Uh, I, I, I am really, really ready to to speak about it. But it's what's going on in France at the moment. When an artist have no job, the only uh, as a dancer, the only way he, he has to go on is mm -hmm. to create his own company, and 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 that saturate the network and the infrastructure are not enough. And if we don't create the possibility for choreographic art to exist in a wider scale, in different domain, uh, if we don't use all the potential of this discipline, and if we just focus on the economical aspect of this model, which was relevant for a moment, but now this model doesn't work, and we are just uh, fitting go. And and then that's those perverse, that's those perverse uh, reaction that uh, some models had so far. Then I think the international collaboration we could have are to this other kind of cooperation, the one I was mentioning before with Faustin Linicula about his place, the, this, this one with those holiday camps that we are having already in a, uh, abroad in the Republic Democratic of Congo. And um, then, um, yeah, just this, and about ecology, uh, 
the, the, the chain of collaboration is very important, and you, you remember it, Sangi, because at the moment, it's what is hard, because it's very easy to say, mieux produire pour mieux diffuser in French, which means to produce better, to, comment dit diffuser, to, to tour, to, uh, voilà, to disseminate better. Actually, the thing which is behind, it means then you have to cut the head, because it's what it means. It means to give more money to certain people and to show longer certain people doing that. I mean, uh, you don't have to be very good in mathematics. It means you have to just to limit the people you want to support. Then it means, uh, and that's why I, th I say this model, if or will uh, create a kind of diet for the profession, uh, or will uh, just uh, create uh, po uh, uh, yeah, poverty for a lot, a lot of our artists. Then our mission is, again, to find all the alternatives we can create. And our structures, again, yours, everything you're doing, uh, you, you say, uh, oh, Catherine, in Centre National de la Danse, we are working as well. It's to emphasize the, practice, the choreographic practices to absorb, to still absorb, and to find the possibility. Thank and, you. And just one last yeah. thing, because it's true, because he's not here. Because, uh, um, no, no, but, uh, uh, yeah, uh, you mentioned uh, Van Cleef and Arpel, and it's true that uh, we need those partners uh, and, uh, in a long-term process. Uh, if, and that's where I wanted to come, because I think that the, the support should be political first not economical, but political first, because there is money uh, in different countries, but if there is not the political choice to put it on promoting art and to, put, to support art in the long term, we are going nowhere. And that's, that was a bit the, where I wanted to go, speaking about the economy of the United States. But it's true that, Van, uh, for example, Van Cleef and Arpel, and uh, you say that, Janet, uh, really, really, uh, bring a support because they believe, they believe in this society with art practices, with uh, fine art, and, uh, and lucky we are for that. I don't know where I'm going with this, but, but I'm, uh, I end up with that. I think that might be the theme of this panel is to maybe, again, echo some of the themes that have happened the last two days and raise a lot of questions and opportunity around it. We're not obviously gonna get to all the answers in this panel, and I appreciate the expansiveness of each of your comments. Um, I'm mindful of um, our respondent, but I, I want to give both of you a chance to respond to, was there something that either one of you said that you want to jump in on before I jump in with a different question? Because I could go can, a lot of directions here. Can I ask these two gentlemen, do you have problem bringing in audiences? I know you talked about a lot of outreach and all of that, because, you know, yeah. Also, the, 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 the tra training the audience at a young age to come in, like, we have a problem of arts education in this country. Funding, a, you know, art is the first thing to go. Highways and hospitals are always more important. The defense budget is more important. So art is suffering. So you have children coming out of school. By the time we reach them in our theater, they are already adults. Maybe is that too, is it, that's too late. And then you wonder, why do we have a population that cannot have nuanced thinking or critical thinking or, or, or have the patience to look at something? And the audience for the, the kind of art form that we do, the, the more, I know you say, let's do also all kinds of, all kinds of work. And we do various kinds of work, but for the, the, the experimental work, for lack of a better word, uh, that audience is, I think, is small. It's relatively small, right? I, I have peers in my in this room. Uh, it's relatively small, and then I have people in my organization. I'll probably lose my job after this. Uh, that say no one wants to pay for experimental work, and then you look at Bam. Next, sorry, sorry, Bam. Um, that there are. Next Wave Festival, that's where I got my art education from when I first moved to New York. It's so beloved, it made Brooklyn what it is. And now, are you performing tonight? At the height of it, there were, what, 30 shows at the Next Wave Festival? This fall, there are six or seven. And there are three theaters. So, like, what, what is going on? What is going on? And under the radar, you mentioned, right? In that, 
okay, I'm making a lot of enemies today. But the article that announced the, the, the season for the public theater and the very beginning of the article is, we're producing the most expensive musical ever with Alicia Keys. And then it's all sold out and, you know, and extended already before it even opened. And then at the very last paragraph is, oh, by the way, we, uh, we're canceling under the radar. You go, oh. So, yeah, sorry, I have a question. When we are talking about the degree, decrease of the number of shows, for instance, is it yeah. first linked to economical, even if it, I know it's connected, wow. of course. Is it about because of the audience that you cannot have in your theaters? Or oh, well, it's no, simply I financial question? Well, for, for us, we, we don't do that many shows. We ha I actually only have 15 weeks out of the year for my department, and then the rest of the weeks we rent the theater out uh, to independent producers uh, who wants to do their own work or to universities, and then if we're lucky, we get a Broadway show in there that pays us you know, commercial rates. Uh, so, but we ha we work very hard to bring in the audience. Uh, we also partner with you know multiple universities around the city. We also work with the James Baldwin School, and we have a dance program in there. Um, but I'm I can't answer for BAM. I know it has to do with budget. But perhaps yeah. to pull back a little bit, just again around looking at curatorial ecologies and looking at you know. The thread of you were starting to talk about, you know, again, the relationship to audience, but also who we're serving. You brought the, the notion of service. Who are we serving? How are we serving the audience? How are you serving the artists from earlier today and yesterday? How are institutions adapting to be in better service to? Um, I want to open up to Ali, but before I do, is there a comment around that notion of how are we serving our artists? How are the institutions changing and adapting to be in service? How are we meeting them? Um, is there anything, I'm mindful that this is the final discussion, so I want to end us on a moment of maybe abundance and possibility, um, if that's possible. Are there comments around those notions? No, but I think it's interesting about the notion of audience because we have many, many um, uh, questions about that, but we, we, we need to remind that, uh, as she told since Malraux, we have a, a huge history with culture and, and, and we work on public mission. And that makes a big difference. Um, the question of audience connected to that question of democratization of culture as a tool to emancipate any citizen is at the center of where we are now. Uh, it's difficult to, especially for with the young uh, people and young audience, and we have to develop a lot of uh, things to uh, to uh, to reach this new generation of uh, of uh, of uh, spectators. But uh, I think that uh, years after years, we've also developed probably uh, to 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 speak very concretely uh, a special skills when probably you have in your theater a big team to fundraise. We have probably big team uh, in uh, what we call public relation and people who are really doing the job in that. Yeah. Thank you for <laughs> So that's also that it's it's really, really difficult. We, I, we, what I've, I don't know what yesterday I was saying that to someone. Uh, the first the thing that I've learned the most after my experience in Chicago is that France and the US are incredibly different and it's probably more different than France and uh, Cambodge or France and uh, Brazil and really and uh, and that question is a typical example of we could discuss for many many hours about to deconstruct our story and to know why are we there today so thank you for bringing up those differences um, I'm mindful Ali Rosa Salas is here as our respondent um, Thank you for being here from Abrams Art Center. Do you have some kind of, you know, coming to a close, some words that are, that are in your mind from today's conversation? And let's get you a mic to, um, thank you. Good afternoon. Oh, woo. Uh, thank you so much for having me. Um, I've been thinking, um, Janet, a lot about what you're saying, just about what's happening right now in Gaza, it's it's not something I, I, I can't not speak about, especially 
in relationship to the to the subject matter of this conversation. So thank you for amplifying um, that. It's and and Lauren too. It's it's impossible to not think about. And it's made me um, return to a question that I've just been, that's been in the Tumblr cycle of my brain, I think since I've started this curatorial work, um, is around institutionality and the, the fact that institutions are people. Uh, and, and I think it, perhaps the, the, the more one ascends in their professional trajectory, in some ways it feels like the more dehumanizing because you become more like a building <laughs> and and less like a person and i and i and i do but i i always try to hold to the fact that institutions are people um and people have subjectivities right and 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 so subjectivities define are defined by lived experience which shape values and then it, because people make up institutions they're making decisions that are values driven um, and distributing resources and making decisions based on those values, right? And so I, and so what, one of the many things that keeps me up at night um, <laughs> is, is, is how this conversation around values and, and subjectivity relates to curatorial practice and, and my deep dissatisfaction with, I think, the depersonalization of the curator um, it, it, in the sense of their, the reason why curators are interested in this work is because of their point of view <laughs> that is deeply political and is deeply context driven and is rooted in time and place and identity and all the things that we need to be talking about, right? Um, and so, and so, blah blah blah. Preamble brings me to thinking about in this particular moment. I think the art art forum letter was brought up. We live in a in a culture of statements, and I'm thinking a lot about the role of cultural institutions in this particular moment. I mean, always. I mean, that's why, Angel, to your point, why I do this work is because I deeply believe that arts and culture shifts the paradigm the capacity to cre think creatively is, is what will save us. Um, but, I, but I think about integrity, right? As it relates to curatorial practice, as it relates to values, as it relates to subjectivity, especially in a time like this. Like what is the role of cultural institutions in this really historic moment that we're all uh, uh, facing in horror if you have a, a brain and a heart? Um, and how does integrity in curatorial practice sort of factor in? Like how, how is that word sort of sitting with each of you as we navigate this moment and the, and the future of, of what it is that we're endeavoring to do in this, in this work? So that's my question. Thank you so much for entertaining it. Thank you. Does someone want to take that on in terms of Rashid, Tanguy? Yeah. Um. If I were understood, uh, I hope I was clear. Like I think that's all the. Um, you speak about integrity, and I heard empathy. Um, work at the moment, and maybe referring to what we are trying to say from before, with this word of certain service. Um, it is it is through this lens to um, to be sure that our function um, is. Uh, in, uh, say, enough well informed to have enough empathy for all the problematic that the diversity we are having confront us. Complex word to say it, but that's that's what lead us as a as a curator, as a programmer. I don't like curator because it gives the feeling that's the how to, the active position, but I really see myself as a person who gives space and hospitality in terms of giving space. Not hospitality in terms of we are going to well receive the audience, the artist, etc. No, to be sure that, uh, for example, we create a Yusnef's concert, to be sure that they are uh, then they come, they have the power to, uh, we give, uh, they will have the budget, uh, they, they can propose 
um, manifestation to gather people, and we try to work with them. Uh, when we work with the community of voguing, we say, okay, then what could be the next step for the, uh, the ballroom, like, et cetera, et cetera. Then it's more by giving spaces uh, and to be sure that to, to, to try, because how I said before, the strength to repeat models is always here, and sometimes it's totally unconscious, but uh, that's, I would say that's uh, what I'm trying to have every day when I'm receiving a proposal, when I'm speaking with someone. I'm, I'm, I'm just trying to understand deeply the project and to, to make the efforts to find the resources, to find the, the places of expression of all those different projects. And that's why I said before, the expression of this project could be to go to knock to what we call the Agence Française de Devel uh, Development French Agency to help to build a school because they think that the priority is to build a school. It is to work with people from Minister of Education because they decide recently to, to have um, uh, 30 minute practices uh, uh, every day in the school. Then, uh, uh, which, uh, then dialoguing with the teenager to see if we can make a, tuto a video tutorial where those people, with, with artists, and then we try to um, I don't know, to, just to emphasize the artistic practice, and sometimes it is just by receiving someone for, for uh, a proposal on stage and to keep going. And I don't know if that's answering the question, but I, I would say that that's um, what is um, the, 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 the thing that le lead uh, Shayo every day. Janet, did you have uh, a, a response oh. as well? Oh. Ali, thank you for saying that institutions are people also and that we have values. A very dear old friend of mine who passed away in 2020 during the pandemic, she was 90 years old. We asked her, she's one of my favorite people in the world, we asked her, so how do you teach young children morals? And she said, you don't, you teach them integrity, you show them integrity, you, inst you instill that in them. So integrity is so central. And I also like to think uh, of institutions as related to people, not just that they are run by people, but that in, an institution can also embody values that, um, but it starts with the, the individual and it's then the family, then the village, then, the, oh, that's Confucius, then the city, then, then, but you have to take care of this part first. Sometimes I don't know how to move uh, because I cannot represent, my, my, my thoughts may not represent the, 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 um, the organizations, um, and and then I have to step back and be humble and think, okay, what? Who am I harming in thinking these thoughts? But right now, in this moment, I'm I don't know. We have not discussed this moment within the organization just privately, and um, I'm very very troubled by that. By this country, I am uh, kind of ashamed at this moment of this country and other Western countries too. Um, but um, yes, so I don't know if that answers your question at all. Um, I was I was listening to a talk that that Fred Moten was giving, and he was speaking so beautifully to the complexity, speaking specifically around statements and institutions, sort of making statements on what's happening in the world. And and he was like, I signed the art form letter, but I just I I don't want anyone to speak on my behalf. You know, like I also, and I really valued how he was able to hold the complexity of what it means to be a person, you know, and, and the contradictions that we all embody and inhabit from moment to moment. Um, and I think, in, yeah, I just appreciate your, your honesty in, in sort of wrestling and not necessarily being, yeah, being in, a, in that sort of curatorial like leadership and being someone to have to have a vision in moments that are so um, emotionally and psychically charged. I think that we just all have to be more honest about about the complexity and about the and, and about the contradictions and multiplicities that we all inhabit. So thank you. Thank you for that, Ali. Um, I'm looking at Noemi because I know we're at time. I know Rashid has a, a production schedule at BAM, but I just want to echo the, the encourage the honesty and encourage the, the generosity, the curiosity, the transparency, 
the new models that were hinted at today. Um, Noemi, I'm going to pass it over to you in terms of time to guide us around either further questions or if we need to close. I, I want to thank the four of you, Angela, for, yes, um, steering the conversation in such, um, um, yes, beautiful, um, rich ways, and also to the three of you for your thoughts, um, provocations. So we're going to just pause here because Rashid has to go. Um, thank you so much, Rashid. I hope um, we, you're all going to see the performance tonight or tomorrow at BAM. And then, um, I don't know if you want to stay here as we take a moment to uh, wrap up together. Um, or if you, um, you know, it's also a, a way perhaps to open for questions. Um, and um, yes, I can also start by offering a few thoughts. Um, we also um, had a, a little statement from Philip. Um, I was wondering if maybe we can just, um, I would just read a few sentences, uh, put um, these in the room. Um, Philip um, is bringing to attention how fraught this global moment is and yet wants to call for greater international exchange, um, why it matters maybe especially at this, at this time. Um, and I'll just read you the last um, part, perhaps, um, saying hope lies in new models emerging in longer, deeper residencies, in multiple modes of new digital exchange, in collaborative and this diversified curation systems, in local global exchange rooted in the specifics of distinct localities, in ecologically minded reinvention of touring, in new global alliances and shared research systems, building greater trust between artists and curators, audiences and organizations, founders and institutions, and between diverse global partners will help point the way forward. Finding new ways to sustain the power of the collective live art experience is the essential work of our time. Um, and so I, I want to say, um, I, I want to thank everyone, you know, the panelists, but everyone in the audience also to um, have uh, been willing to engage, um, you know, in this experiment, I would say. Um, I know we've covered, I mean, or it feels like we've branched out in so many areas. And, um, yeah, I feel very grateful for um, the kind of time and labor to um, engage in um, the different works, you know, that, that you do. Um, you know, hearing from perspectives from curators and dancers and archivists and, um, and, 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 you know, makers. Uh, it feels very valuable at this um, time. And I just want maybe to go back to, you know, this idea of reciprocity, which, um, you know, as I mentioned yesterday in opening, um, you know, just as I've been thinking about it, um, I find very striking in this idea that, you know, it's, it is a kind of moving back and forth, right? It is, it, there's, a, there's, a, there's a practice to it, it seems to me, right? It never can be just a given, but it's something that we have to revisit and, and sustain over time. And surely time has been a word that recurred for the last two days, right? Yesterday um, was very present in regard to the residence, residencies, um, but also about pedagogy, right? Um, to be reminded that, um, yeah, dance, dancers are maybe not just available, as, you know, Noe um, suggested and, and also um, just reminded us. Um, so this idea of creating partnerships or relations, right, over time uh, with dancers and, and but, but also I think across uh, institutions and, and, and borders is, um, um, yeah, very meaningful. And uh, so, um, Yes, I wonder if we have thoughts or questions. It's, you know, it's not easy to. Uh, um, but maybe just, just to say time and, 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 and bring back Dorothée's, you know, from this morning, then the, the gathering of the dispersed, right? Um, the gathering of the dispersed as, 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 a, as a kind of collective practice, right? That um, I feel like many of you are doing already and you know the respective practices um, 
Um, I, yeah, it feels like a beautiful, um, um, yes, uh, and, and, and actually quite potent way of thinking of the work. Um, yeah, questions? Ah, Thad, yeah. I, I wanted to share a story um, stemming from what Rashid Ramdan shared about the history of Chaillot. I just completed a long research project around that era in France, which, um, at which time my grandfather was the equivalent of the Minister of Culture, and he was actually responsible for building the Palais de Chaillot as we know it today. And the year it opened was 1937, which obviously was two years before the Second World War broke. It was one year after France passed the law for the congé payé, uh, giving vacation for all workers in France. And the project of Chaillot was very much coming out of this political mindset. It was a, po it was a point in France at which um, the political uh, body, the, the largest political body in France, headed by the president and the and the, the assembly, the Assemblée Nationale, really believed that democracy could only happen through the arts and through arts education and through culture and through the sharing of culture. What's important to note, also as we stand all here today, is that in 1938, the year after Chaillot opened, a year before the war broke. Uh, France introduced LAFA, which is uh, the reason that there is a cultural ambassador in New York and anywhere in the world. This is the body, uh, the institutional body that created cultural diplomacy in France. And so as we, you know, stand in this historical moment and it's all these global crises, I think to be reminded of you know, that utopian government, maybe, you know, like the its detractors called it utopian because, of course, the war happened nonetheless. But to note that, you know, that, that's, a, that's a political project. Arts education and, and bridging these worlds and creating um, spaces where arts can be disseminated for all is a political project amidst the global crisis that we're facing. Thank you. Thank you all for that wonderful panel and Ali for the response. And I, I just also want to thank you, Noemi, for bringing us together. I don't know if we've had that again. Really. Um, and thinking about that work and, and the curating ecologies, I thought I'd just throw something in there, which I started to wonder, like, can you curate an ecology? And what happens when we try to curate ecologies? And then we have, like, Central Park right outside, which is such a curated ecology. And we've done so much destruction trying to curate ecologies rather than trying to attend to the ways in which they thrive and they live. Um, and I, and, and just to the, to the comment then about institutions being people, it made me think of one of my favorite quotes from um, Wilfred Bion, a psychoanalyst, because um, I often thought like institutions are people and it's like somehow now being in an institution, running an institution that doesn't feel, uh, that's like still hurts to say that. So I started to turn to this quote where Beyond says, um, the problem with all institutions is that they are dead, but the people inside them are not. And there's something about that that feels just in this room to say that like, like constantly looking for what is alive in these like things that we inherit, these institutions we inherit, um, not to lambast institutions, but to say we're always in some ways working against the forms we've inherited. Um, that that makes me wonder, like, you know, when we're curating, are we curating towards, this is a conversation I've had with Noemi, which is why it made me just a full circle, I want to thank you, is like, what would it be to curate towards something other than the performance, than the event? Um, and so I just enter that as a sort of open-ended question into the space. Hi, no, I just want to say thank you so much and how moving it is to be in the room with you all. 
And uh, the question of ecology reminded me of this great thinker, French thinker, when asked the question, what should we do, you know, after like an hour long podcast about the state of the ecology and the planet? And he said very seriously, people should dance and people should sing. And I think that there's this level of empathy that happens when we're connected to oneself, to others, and to the world around us. And just seeing Emmanuelle do her gesture earlier today, I'll keep it in this body that is also the archive of having seen so much work over the years and being this living library and the impact that we all had on each other's life that will never be able, will never, or I will never be able to put words to it because it's this kind of transmission, even as audience member. And so I just wanted to remind myself and maybe others also just of the importance of small gestures in the context of the complexity of our world. So thank you. Um, I uh, want to thank everybody, Naomi and Bill Albertine and staff, amazing. And this amazing community of um, creators, thinkers, um, great sense of solidarity. I just want to bring it back to the incredible, wonderful um, comment and um, enlightened reminder to us about what it means, um, what arts do for cohesion, for democracy, and especially relevant to us in New York, in an, an American system, where, as Janet and many others pointed out, how much we benefit from European support. And it's uh, bringing productions that have been created with um, European taxpayers' money and European state support. And um, what do we do to disseminate our own work? At what prices? What kind of access we create for our audiences where, where American taxpayers also support the system of tax-exempt institutions? However, very few people percentage-wise uh, percentage benefit from access and attending those institutions. As um, Janet reminded me, I also remember the times when it, for $7 I could go and see Pina Bausch at BAM in the 90s um, and check out the prices now for any international production that come to BAM and many other institutions and how little access actually people have uh, for us uh, presenters, and I'm one of the presenters, I run PS21, upstate New York, um, it has direct relevance because we do not cultivate our audiences. Uh, we don't, um, through this kind of um, systems of exclusion, of economic exclusion, we don't cultivate our audiences. So it's just um, a, maybe an appeal to solidarity to pay attention to this, um, that... Uh, we have to really also, as individuals, make an effort to um, work for our institutions and encourage our institutions not only to um, disseminate the work through accessible pricing, but also, uh, more importantly, reach out to communities, very wide communities, and make a special effort to engage those communities in residencies and participatory work and also in, in attending those institutions. And lastly, um, the generosity of French um, embassy and Villa Albertine also, why not guys joining us in this effort of actually um, requesting that the prices for the productions that you so generously fund are also accessible uh, to the widest um, populations in this city and elsewhere. So thank you so, so much everybody again. Good afternoon, so I'm here at the beginning and at the end. <laughs> and for those of you that I didn't meet yesterday, I'm Judith Rose, director, acting director of Villa Albertine. Pleasure to see you again. I'd like to thank you all for uh, attending these two days of exchanges. We hope you found this event to be both informative and enjoyable. Uh, of course, I'd particularly like to thank our speakers, our moderators, and Noemi for leading your discussion so effectively. 
And because the day is not quite finished and because we have a few more announcements to make, we'd like to invite you all to celebrate in the next room with a glass of champagne. Thank you. Yeah.